here and now, here we are. And the uh, and it's uh, continuing. The genocide of the Palestinians is continuing with the uh, the bomb supplied by the United States of America. Even though Blinken this morning came out with some sort of a statement expressing his sympathy for the Palestinians and how there has to be a Palestine state and all this, you know, yeah, well, you know, they've been using words like that for quite a while, you know, but. Even those words alone, you know, are certainly a slap in the face to uh, the Zionist state itself right now. Well, Mr. Blinken represents a certain wing of the U.S. Um, governing class in the State Department. What what he will accomplish in the Middle East on his recent current trip remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. The hawks, the neocon hawks like Victoria Newland and others seem to be the ones with their, their ear to the president, even though one of the, the I think the U.S. Gerald Ford has, has come out of the Middle East, there are also, there's, there's still still a desire to bomb Iran, um, to to uh, attack Hezbollah and the Shia militias in, in Iraq and Syria. So we'll see how much, it doesn't seem like Mr. Mr. Blinken has much peace to offer anybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially after Israel just assassinated one of the chief uh, Hamas negotiators in Beirut, who is supposed how, to be, you know, how, like uh, under uh, you know international protection from Lebanon and Hezbollah, you know, like and they, you know, six bombs, you know, together with you know a number of other of his comrades there, you know, like wiped off the face of the earth, you know, and uh, and then they expect. Uh, you know, negotiation to continue? No. no. Okay, so negotiations have been broken off, you know. So all, you know, those, you know, people are concerned for humanitarian reasons, you know, for the sake of the hostages, you know, held by Hamas, you know, that's all finished, you know. They're going to remain there under the bombardments, you know, like uh, that Israel is dishing out, you know, to the people of, you know, Gaza. And this is also affecting all the Hamas hostages, you know, of whom there are, uh, what, 132, and I think a large number... You know, anything that I've heard of, you know, like from 20 to 60 have been killed already by bombs. So, you know, this is such a farce. Well, um, I have I, I agree with you. The murder of the of the lead the, of one of the lead negotiators for the return of the Palestinian and the Israeli prisoners. To to murder that person indicates that you don't see the importance of that person being around to facilitate the release of your own people. Mm. That doesn't say much about your interest in, in negotiations, in my opinion. On the contrary, yeah. <laughs> it shows that you want interest in negotiations because who, who, this, this, let's just think about this now. Let's just say during the Vietnam War, if the United States had carried out a persist, so quote unquote persistent, persistent strike on a leadership of North North Vietnam during the negotiations. Huh. Do you think the negotiations would have gotten any would, would have gone forward right there? No, that would have been in the negotiations. Yeah. It was the same kind of thing. You how do you attack? How do you kill a, the a negotiator? Yeah. yeah, yeah, You don't see the negotiators being as important, viable, or meaningful to your your strategy. So I, I agree with you. The negotiations, yeah. at least right now, are over with. Yeah. Yeah, the, they couldn't care less about the hostages, basically, you know, because what's important is that they have to have some kind of a military victory, and they're not getting it. It's being prolonged and prolonged, you know. Well, and uh, we don't know, you know, like they don't reveal, you know, how many of their own soldiers are being, you know, destroyed alongside of this, you know, attempt, you know, to recoup, you know, the uh, prestige of uh, the fourth largest military power in the world. That was defeated on October the seventh, you know, by Hamas, and even at that time, you know, went faster than they even expected. You know, they were planning, you know, a twenty-four hour, you know, campaign to try to uh, occupy the military and uh, colonial uh, 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 um, targets, you know, around Gaza, and they captured them all, you know, within hours. You know, <laughs> and they basically had nothing left to do, you know, because you know, beyond that was desert, you know, so they weren't going to sort of walk into the nothingness. So it's, it's sort of, you know, so Israel had to sort of, you know, do something in order to sort of recoup. 
And uh, this is what they've been planning for all along. You know, this is not something that they're doing uh, in response to, you know, the fabricated horror stories of October the 7th. No, this oh. has been planned all along. The resettlement uh, or, you know, genocide of the Palestinians uh, and uh, the uh, uh, the expulsion of the Palestinians was supposed, you know, they even have a map, you know, which I came across once, you know, uh, of the area in uh, the Egyptian Sinai that they were supposed to be allocated to, which was removed from even the coast, you know, it was just, you know, like practically in the middle of the desert there. Incredible. Um, but something is breaking now, you know, they've held on to this, you know, and Blinken's statement today is an indication of something cracking in the USA establishment. And I have... Uh, I'll share a photo to show you here. Okay. And uh, here it is. These are the staff members of the White House and of the various Ooh. other, you know, strategic departments of the USA state. And they're out right. there protesting an individual against the White House. And they even tell the President Biden, your staff demands a ceasefire. These are all staffers, you know, for the White House. For Biden, and they can't take it anymore. And right. if you look here, you know, there's one, two, three, and four guys. Yeah, they look like men. No, maybe not. You know, four of the staffers are wearing kafias, you know, <laughs> Palestinian, you know, solidarity, you know, like uh, scarves. You know, like this is incredible. This is revolutionary. You know, they're in a revolution open, you know, of course, they're hidden, hiding themselves, you know, like they would all be, you know, destroyed, you know, if their faces right. were known. But they're all hidden, except for this guy, who's their spokesperson, who had resigned previously. And uh, we have a copy oh, of his I statement him. here. I remember him. Yeah. So his statement, there's a statement of his somewhere around here. Ah, uh, here it is. Yes. But it's, it's, I don't know if I can get it any. Yeah, I think I can expand it here. Oh my, it's not working like it should be. Okay, <laughs> let's see if I can read something here, you know, that would be revealing. This is from inside Biden's staff. We are an interfaith group of staffers of the Biden-Harris administration. We come to work every day to serve the American public and to inform and execute the president's priorities as the most diverse administration in U.S. history. Uh, a metric Biden's top advisors have proudly touted as meeting the president's internal directive, having a staff that reflects America. Da -da -da -da. We stand before the White House tonight on the seventh night of Hanukkah as we get ready to celebrate Christmas and the winter holidays with our beloved ones to make clear we cannot stay, stay silent about the atrocities that are continuing in Gaza. Over 800 of us have signed a letter to the president, vice president and cabinet members demanding a ceasefire and de-escalation. We were horrified by the brutal October the 7th attack on Israeli civilians. Uh, well, it was on the <laughs> military, you know, more so. And have have been horrified by the disproportionate response by the Israeli government, which has indiscriminately killed thousands of innocent Palestinian civilians in Gaza and displaced over a million more. That's, you know, like a, a week or two ago. We have seen refugee camps, hospitals, schools, and entire neighborhoods bombed. We have been seen dead men, women, and children pulled from the rubble in their pajamas. We have seen harassment, humiliation, and degradation of many kinds. This is unacceptable. A temporary ceasefire embarked 13 days ago, and we were horrified to see the full resumption of killings, displacement, and bombardments of Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Yes, I mentioned this. You know, like if they can stop and have a ceasefire, then what would be the reason, you know, for continuing the war again? You know, like a temporary pause to this violence was never enough. We must move with urgency to stay, save as many lives as possible and achieve an immediate permanent ceasefire agreement and the return of all hostages. Never mind about the refugees. You know, The American people and respected institutions like the United Nations are pleading for a ceasefire and this administration has yet to listen. We demand President Biden, members of the cabinet speak up. Demand, you know, they, you know, it's a demand. It's not a petition, it's a demand. We call for permanent ceasefire, release of all hostages, and an immediate de-escalation now. 
Our voices and the voices of the American people, people demand that this violence must stop. And for this reason, we once again call on President Biden to support an immediate and permanent ceasefire. Both Israelis and Palestinians have the right to live with equal rights, safety, peace, and human dignity. The lives of millions of people hang in the balance in Gaza and Israel, in the West Bank, and across the region. More than 18,000 Palestinians have been killed in this aggression and more than 7,700 deaths being children. We are here this evening to mourn the loss of every individual, beautiful and innocent life. As we lay flowers and stones in the memory, we demand an end to the violence that took them. Well, since then, we haven't heard from them, of course, but nonetheless, you know, not bad, you know. No, no, no. anonymous, though, you know, no, so... But... Well, you got to remember, we have to remember, all of our listeners, I think, should remember a couple of things. This is how I'm seeing it. These these calls from within the government, it's honorable, it's acceptable within the milieu that they're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's a way of getting public pressure. Uh, but the real demand is to support the Palestinian resistance through labor and mass struggles to um, bring about the end of the Zionist state of Israel and set something else up. Mm -hmm. Something that's going to serve the, the, the Palestinian and Jewish masses there who can't live together. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the no ceasefire call. However, we, we can't even get Biden to agree to that. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. it, he, he, he doesn't even have the tactical wisdom. He doesn't have the strategic understanding of how to use a tactic to achieve his political demands. And that's why he's such a he's such a poor politician. Mm -hmm. All he knows how to do is go in the brawl, go go in the ring and brawl. And mm -hmm. even and even the most astute boxer will tell you sometimes that doesn't work. Matter of fact, most mm -hmm. times it doesn't work. You have to mm -hmm. do something else in the ring. So mm -hmm. now that's what I wonder what is Blinken going to accomplish when his boss is such a war, such such a war hawk. Well, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see. I appreciate mm -hmm. the statement, and I wish I'll call more Americans and people in Europe to at least unite with this. But mm -hmm. the real call from us on the, those of us who are internationalists should be victory for the Palestinian resistance and mm -hmm. the and, and to abolish the state of Israel. That is my opinion. The Zionist state of Israel, the Zionist state has to go. It, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is no longer functional, in my opinion, as a mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that's what requires Israelis, Israelis, Jewish people around the world to make this demand popular. Without mm -hmm. some without some change inside Israel, be very hard. It's going to be very hard to make some kind of long lasting improvement in in a situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this is like our petition, you know, that we launched at the vigil last week, uh, Jewish petition for a ceasefire now, and in, in uh, over the course of the week, we you know we've had you know 105 signatures already, in, wow. including Greta Ber Berlin, you know, uh, you know, founder of the Free Palestine movement. Yeah. And uh, Rabbi Milver, you know, um, and Sayer, you know, like a prominent, you know, Canadian oppositionist. Uh, uh, and so, um, but, you know, the statement doesn't even call for recognition of, you know, Palestine as a political, you know, entity. It only, you know, calls for, you know, ceasefire. And uh, I don't even see the word negotiations there, you know, negotiations with who, you know, they're sort of so reticent, you know, to, to negotiate, yeah. you know, with anybody that has any sort of, you know, political representation of the actual Palestinians trying to make up some sort of, you know, like something that they can negotiate with, you know, and sell out the Palestinians with. Now, Palestinian Authority has tended to play this role, but they can't now, you know, because, you know, the Palestinian people are mobilized. And then even yeah. the West Bank, you know, they're being attacked, you know, by the settlers and the military. And at the same time, military incursions into Jenin, you know, are killing, you know, like a dozen people a night, you know, and the resting, you know, another dozen. Well, sorry, you know, killing, you know, three, four a night and the resting a dozen. And uh, so, you know, the Palestinian Authority, you know, cannot act as, you know, like uh, uh, as, you know, an agent, you know, of the Zionist state anymore to the extent that it has. Great. Very good. That's, that's a very good statement. The and the United States, I, 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 even Blinken has recognized this, you know, even Blinken is calling for the recognition of some kind of, you know, like a Palestinian, you know, uh, authority, you know, that would, you know, like, and the Palestinians themselves are talking about this, you know, forming a, a national unity government in which the uh, Hamas would be joining the Palestine Liberation Organization, which includes, you know, Fatah and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and also the Islamic Jihad, you know, would be joining the PLO, so it would become, you know, a, a pluralist, you know, like political formation that could form a unity government and that could, you know, take over. 
So, you know, Israel is, you know, like, is totally out of it, you know, like, even if they win this whole thing, you know, militarily, even if they get away with everything, you know, that they're planning to do, they will not have the political authority, you know, to impose themselves afterwards, you know, because the United States, even the United States will not let them do so. Because, you know, the United States knows this would be a disaster. It would be, you know, just lead to, a, you know, like another war and uh, another regional war, which on the, we're on the brink of, you know, in any case. Well, I, I think that um, I'm of the view that the regional war in many ways has already started. Israel yeah. is bombing, even though it's the, what we're not having is the response from those who've been attacked. Uh-huh. Like, well, or, 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 or it's, or, no, let me take that back. We have had responses. I didn't. I didn't. War is going on now with the Houthis, with um, the the militias in Syria and in Iraq, and uh, with um, the cowardly bombing of uh, the ceremony for um, the Iranian general a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. I think the war. I think the war is occurring. It's just a, it's a different type of war. It's not like you have cannons and lines of defense. And you know, and this kind of thing, and drones on both sides. It's 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 a, it's a different kind of war. Israel's war is war of infrastructure destruction and and and, and assassination and using um, the elements of water, electricity, food, and healthcare as weapons against Palestinians. Yeah, every possible terrorist trick that they can use, they are using. You know, Israel right. has really gone overboard. And yes, they're pulling, yes, you know, the Israeli yes. population to, you know, with them, you know, they're, they've, you know, stirred up this, you know, like hysteria based upon, you know, the horror stories of uh, October the 7th, you know, to generate this idea, you know, that the, um, the Hamas or the Palestinians or the Arabs or all the Muslims are out to annihilate all the Jewish people. This is, you know, their thesis. This is, you know, no, their contention. You know, and and the Israeli media, media, you know, like is not, you know, like uh, trying to educate the Israeli public uh, opinion. Otherwise, you know, they're letting this, you know, like go. This is, you know, the 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 line, the political line, and and they act, you know, just like the old communist parties used to, you know, like with strict discipline, you know, and everybody agrees to lie at the same time, you know, in order to, for the cause, you know, to be promoted, you know, and all this sort of stuff. Incredible, you know, like ideological hold that they have over such a large proportion of the Jewish people. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, um, yes. That's 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 very important. This, this fortress mentality that has been that has been inculcated within within the Jewish the 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 Israeli citizenry, and the inability at this point for large numbers of Israelis to break from the Zionist idea and to embrace a different, more liberating view views and relationships. Between Palestinian and Arab speaking peoples and 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 Israeli citizens who are who are Jewish, there has to be a way this can occur. Because if not, as long as you have the divisions based on religion, based on language, based on color of skin, it's the the Israeli ruling class and you and the U.S. government sits sits sits, sits back and laughs at people, and mm-hmm. their their political their political agenda. Is being implemented, but that an agenda to help the working, help the working people to uh, bring peace between the Palestinians and and the Israeli citizens. That is on the back burner, and without that, without a movement to support the Palestinian resistance, it's unfortunately um, it's going to stay on the back burner. And the back burner, the back burner is 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 going to be broken. It's not even going to work. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm I, I'm concerned the same way you're concerned. Uh, Dr. Weisfield, I, I, I have the same concerns. Yeah. So the, you know, the, the Israel is not going to be deterred by anything, not even by the United States, not even by Blinken's statement this morning. The only thing that can deter Israel is within, not just within the Israelis, you know, which is more of a hopeless case, but uh, within the Jewish people. You know, and the majority of the Jewish people are not under the domination of the Israeli government because they don't live in Israel, even though Israel right. calls itself, you know, like, uh, you know, the state of the Jewish people, you know, like it doesn't have any mandate, you know, from the Jewish people to do so. So what we're starting, you know, with the vigil in front of the Jewish community campus here in Montreal and with a petition, international petition in, in four languages is a revolt from within. And it's written uh 
as a Jewish document speaking to uh, other Jewish people, and it is calling for a revolt from within the Jewish people against the Zionist dictatorship of the Jewish people. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what that's this what petition is doing, you know? Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, that has not been done, you know, by Jewish other Jewish opposition groups, you know, Jewish Voice for Peace, not in their name and all this, you know. They direct their actions to the general public, to educate the general public okay. that they can have confidence in these Jewish people to believe that Israel is uh, um, acting in bad faith and is uh, uh, misrepresenting the Jewish people and is committing international war crimes. Okay, so they've succeeded in doing so, but it has not solved the problem. It has not deterred Israel sure because they have to take a turn towards the their, towards the inside of the Jewish people. They have to go into the Jewish people, into the Jewish institutions. They have to debate, you know, the the leaderships of the Jewish organizations, contest their narrative, and go on the streets into the Jewish neighborhoods even, you know, to hold vigils, you know, so you have direct contact. Yes. Because we yes. are totally censored, you know. There's a newspaper called, it calls itself the Canadian Jewish News, but they will never report anything that's anti-Zionist. Never. They even... Took uh, you know until just last week is the first time that they mentioned that there was Jewish opposition organizations in Canada, but they wouldn't mention the Jewish Bund, no, because that's credible to the Jewish people. The other organizations are just considered to be you know assimilated Marxist Jewish uh, people you know who are out to make a name for themselves, and that's it. That they want attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know, need, and they can yeah, easily be need. dismissed. Yeah, they they sure can. They can easily be dismissed. That is so true. Yeah. That is so true, and we uh, uh, every hand we the whole world has a the whole world has a fight on its hand. You know? this, this is this is uh, a worldwide. This is this is a really um, this has really impacted the entire world. This yeah. particular the, this struggle in the Middle East. I mean, I mean it's it's overshadowing everything, and people cannot turn their eyes away because it's always another horror. Oh, the, the horror that, that that Israel and the U.S. is carrying out. Yeah. This is, that, you know, a wave of indignation on top of the wave of anti-hegemonism, you know. So there was a big talk, you know, about how the third world, you know, was revolting and has coalesced into a force that was going to take on the United States of America and all this sort of thing. Okay, now we have another wave that is climbing on top of the first wave. So, you know, it's like a double wave of force of political force, of historic force, that is contesting U.S. hegemony in the world. This is, you know, what this means. It's not just, you know, like isolated in and of itself. It's on top of the other crisis right. that the United States right. is being presented with. So that right. they went, they went berserk, you know, and, and you know, like. But you know, I think that they're sort of, you know, realizing that they can't get away with it this time. I think that they're withdrawing, you know, some of their naval, you know, like forces from the Mediterranean as well, so they don't get into a. Uh, a fight with uh, Lebanon, and uh, and and now the statement from Blinken this morning, you know, calling for a Palestine state. Even the staffer's statement that I read out to you, you know, doesn't call for the recognition of Palestine, you know, but Blinken it does. You know, like it's incredible. But the, but the but the problem is that the that the Zionist state will always attack the Palestinian state. Yeah, the they Zionist won't let it state, happen. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, the Zionist state would treat Palestine as a state the same way they treat Lebanon and Syria. Now, with Egypt, they don't mess around. I, 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 I don't know mm. if they noticed that. Israel's not messing around with Egypt. They mess around with Lebanon and Syria and Jordan. Mm. Mm. And they haven't messed around with Jordan too much either. So they, mm. they, they, pick, and, they pick their battles very carefully. But what, yeah. what is, what, what, we'll need to see what is this. I doubt that Mr. Blinken made this statement without the approval of the president. I doubt he would I mean I doubt he would do that. So yeah. it's on the one hand for Biden to be such a war hawk mm -hmm. and support the mass murder and slaughter of, mm -hmm. of women, men and um girls and children and boys mm -hmm. and in 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 um Gaza and then call for Palestinian state where in downtown Brooklyn or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they're just playing a good cop, bad cop. You know, this is yeah. their game. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. I think so. Uh, you know, it's, it's so disgusting. You know, like I have this immense revulsion. You know, with what the state of uh, the world, you know, mentality is. Uh, except that it's it's, it's, you know, it's like, barbarism. It's yeah, barbarism. 
but being on the vigil, you know, I'm going back, you know, tomorrow as well, you know, right. to the Jewish community campus, you know, it, it feels great, you know, when, when some, you know, Zionist fanatics come up and say, how dare you come here and protest in front of the Jewish community campus? You know, like, and I said, yeah, exactly. That's exactly why I'm here, you know, like, and I'm, and I'm, and I told him, you know, like, I'm Jewish, second generation Holocaust survivor. You know, you can't tell me that I can't be here. You know, if this is a Jewish community center, then this is where I belong. You know, right. I can right. get lost. Type right, thing. right. Well, you know, well, we all know how, how, how that goes. Somebody wants to have a narrative that defines what that community center is about. And, it, yeah. and current, the current narrative doesn't doesn't involve the Palestinians having any rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can see in the videos, you know, like uh, there was a donator, you know, a supporter who donated a body cam to me, you know, a high definition body cam that the police usually use, you know, that sells yeah. for 150 from China, but somehow the police budgets can't afford it for all the policemen. Okay, so, you know, like right in front, you can see in all the videos that are posted on the YouTube channel, that there is the Israel flag, you know, flying right in front of the Jewish community campus on its own flagpole. Okay, what's that doing there? You know, like, yeah, very, who authorized very good that? Yeah. Very good question. Okay, well, yeah, there was one librarian who came out, you know, and said, you know, that she sympathized with what I was doing. In. And, uh, good, good. and I said to her, you know, like, uh, you know, why couldn't they just, you know, lower the flag, even, you know, just until the ceasefire, you know, because, you know, this is giving Jewish people here in Montreal, you know, a bad name. You know, like, you know, what is this, you know, justifying, you know, any attack, you know, that uh, uh, Palestinian can can inflict upon, you know, that flag and whoever's holding it, you know, because, you know, their members, members of their own family were just bombed, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, oh, yeah. and she, she agreed, you know, that flag should be taken down. And this is from the yeah. inside of the Jewish yeah. community campus. So yeah. there's, you know, something happening here. Yes, there is. There is. There, I mean, slowly but surely, people are waking up. The the, the 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 concern we have to have is the speed with which this can be accelerated to stop the continuing murder and starvation and human, uh, inhuman conditions being forced on the Palestinian people by the United States and Israel. Yeah. We, we need people to wake up quickly and get involved and demand a system that will stop that. It's going it's to take some systematic change to stop this. We'll, yeah. we'll just see what happens. Uh, so when we get enough signatures, you know, on the petition, the next step is to try to break through into the uh, into the uh, public domain of the Jewish political culture and, uh, and get it published, uh, you know, paid uh, advertisement, so-called, you know, in either the uh, New York Jewish Forward or the Canadian Jewish News, see which one we can accomplish, you know, so that's, uh, okay. and use that as a, a battering ram, you know, to break down the doors of the censorship. There you go. Yeah. You, have to, you, have to, you have to do what you have to do. Oh, well, we'll do it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for your support. And perhaps, you know, we can get together with Ahmed, you know, who's working today, of course. But, you know, Ahmed from Palestine, you know, it would be wonderful to, you know, to get him, you know, to come in on a discussion to find out what's going on, you know, from inside the Palestinian political culture. So until tomorrow well, night, you know. You no, know, we, 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 need, we need him. We need, we, need, we need many voices. And for those people who can demonstrate this weekend, please go out to demonstrate. At, 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 at the Israeli designers consulates anywhere in the world. And mm -hmm. if so, you can't demonstrate, write letters, make phone calls, do something with it in your neighborhood, have a have a coffee conversation with your with your friends about the situation and the need for the need for the need for support for the Palestinian resistance and mm -hmm. and, and, and into the Zionist state of Israel. Yeah. So that's what we need. Especially with your Jewish friends, you know, talk to them and find out, you know, like where, where they're at, you know, and, and yeah. what uh, what they've been misled to believe. So, yeah. um, um, you know, um, what we're doing, you know, like is very unique, you know, like every other, you know, like podcast that uh, it happens, you know, uh, uh, on YouTube and whatever, you know, like our journalistic reports, you know, giving people, you know, the uncensored views, you know, that are necessary. And the gray zone is, you know, magnificent for doing so, you know, giving us, you know, like yes. real actuality, you know, what's going yes. on. Even had a report, yes. you know, from inside Iran, you know, today. So, yes. um, but what we do is political analysis. We do the political critique around, you know, the journalism, you know, uh, beneath the journalism, you know, the, and we also present a methodology for escaping from the current, you know, like, uh, uh, establish, you know, facts on the ground. We have a revolutionary yes. approach to explain here and a methodology by which, you know, to do so. Yes, so I think it's exactly. that's what's so important for people to listen to here. 
you know, yes. even though the, 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 the viewing, you know, of our, you know, videos has gone down over the last little while, nonetheless, you know, the hardcore of people who want to know what the strategic implications of the methodological, you know, um, implications are here, you know, will, well, are listening to us and, and we ask them to share this, you know, with other people who they would know, you know, would appreciate, you know, what we have here to offer. And then yes, you know, we can build um, up our base. Yes, I, I want to add something to that. The more comments we have, the more comments we have in 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 the discussion part of the screen, the more pants will be uh, that YouTube will let us be seen by more people. Mm -hmm. The comments are important, the likes are important, the shares are important. There's a little, mm -hmm. you know, we have to find a way of increasing the amount of people who hear our voice, who who uh, who look for our message and who share it. So make comments, like, and share. That's very important. Great. Okay. Okay. See you all next week. Thank you.